Good evening. I'm Dr. Ben Blasco, Director of Instrumental Studies here at Lipscomb University. I want to welcome you to our broadcast of a few of the instrumental ensembles for this fall. Our ensembles are made up of music majors and non-music majors alike, and before the music begins, I wanted to take a moment and share with you what our fall semester has looked like. Like all schools and universities, we are navigating the challenges presented by COVID-19. So the Lipscomb School of Music made the decision to hold no public performances by our ensembles. This was one, to protect our students and faculty, and two, to protect you, our audience. So instead, we decided to safely film our ensembles during rehearsal times and then stream the music later for you, for your enjoyment. And first, I would like to say to our students, Thank you. You've gone above and beyond this semester. The health and safety protocols we put in place added a lot of unique challenges to overcome, but you really stepped up to this challenge and you have made this a semester to remember, so thank you. Now, all of our ensembles were broken up into smaller groups so that we could safely maintain social distancing. Additionally, increased HVAC, masks when not playing, medical air purifiers, hand sanitation, plexiglass, shortened rehearsal times were just a few of the things we put in place to keep everyone safe while making music. And in some of these videos, you'll notice we're a bit more casual than we normally would be in a performance. To make these recordings possible, we had to record our rehearsals, um, re rehearsals and perform then. So please, enjoy us on our normal working environment. I just wanted to provide you a bit of background so you could have fuller context in which we work this semester. And finally, throughout this broadcast, you will hear from a few of our students as they share information about some of the music you will hear. We are all so glad you have tuned in, so please sit back and relax as we begin with the performance by the Lipscomb Jazz Combo, led by Simon Ye, performing Don't Take the B Train. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Janelle Spires, a junior piano major here at Lipscomb University. The next work you will hear comes from American composer Stephen Bryant. Stephen is a native of Arkansas and is a graduate of Wichita University, University of North Texas, and the Juilliard School. His work, Dusk, originally written for full wind ensemble, is a simple, chorale-like work with the intent of emulating the reflective calm of dusk, right before evening. This is illuminated by the fiery hues of sunset. The composer writes, I'm always struck by the dual nature of this experience, as if witnessing an event of epic proportions silently occurring in slow motion. Dusk is intended as a short, passionate evocation of this moment of dramatic stillness. I hope you enjoy this chamber performance of Stephen Bryant's Dusk.
I'm Michelle McClary, a sophomore horn performance major here at Lipscomb University. The next work, performed by a chamber group of the Lipscomb Wind Ensemble, is Frank Tekeli's Vesuvius. When discussing his work, Vesuvius, Dr. Tekeli has the following to say. Mount Vesuvius, the volcano that destroyed Pompeii in 79 AD, is an icon of power and energy in this work. Originally, I had in mind a wild and passionate dance such as might have been performed at an ancient Roman bacchanalia. During the compositional process, I began to envision something more explosive and fiery. With its driving rhythms, exotic modes, and quotations from the Dies Irae from the medieval mass, it became evident that the bacchanalia I was writing could represent a dance from the final days of the doomed city of Pompeii. I hope you enjoy Frank to Kelly's Vesuvius.
Hello, I'm Selena Fritz, a Bachelor of Arts major with emphasis in oboe at Lipscomb. The next work that you will hear is Sharp Nine by composer and professor of composition at the University of Texas, Austin, Omar Thomas. His work, Sharp Nine, is a work for adaptable instrumentation that focuses on developing improvisation skills over 12 bar blues. The work pays homage to jazz cornetist and early jazz pioneer Charles Joseph Buddy Bolden and is in a New Orleans style march. You will hear solos from Seth Peterson, Kobe Ward, and Sam Pearson. We hope you enjoy Sharp Nine by Omar Thomas. Sasato dances were composed in 1551 by Thielman Sasato as part of the Dancery Collection. The Dancery pieces were based on popular melodies of the time, and the three Sasato dances included three rons, or a type of dance meant to be performed in a circle. Sasato intended the dances to be pleasant and able to be performed by many different instruments, including strings. Not much is known about Sasato's origins, 
but we do know that he was proficient at several different wind instruments. He composed many dances in his lifetime, and the latter part of his life um, operated the first music press in the Netherlands. I personally enjoy the three sonata dances because they're simple yet artistic, and there are several points where the music is unified in order to remind the dancers that they need to keep moving together in order to keep the circle going. Overall, it's a lovely piece from the Renaissance era, and I'm glad to have had the chance to play it this semester.
Hello, I'm Jaden Bowen, and I'm a senior here at Lipscomb University. The next work you will hear is a movement from Frank Ticelli's Cajun Folk Songs. We will be performing the second movement entitled Bella, which has been reworked for adaptable instrumentation. Cajun Folk Songs is about the Cajun people, descendants of the Acadians, a group of early French colonists who settled in Acadia, now Nova Scotia, around 1604. They were driven out by the British in 1755 and eventually settled in Louisiana. Composer Frank Ticelli wanted to capture the spirit and pure expressionism of Cajun music, which resulted in his work, Cajun Folk Songs. One of the movements, the one we will perform today, Bella, is about a man who goes away to Texas only to receive word of his sweetheart's illness, forcing him to return to Louisiana. Finding her unconscious upon his return, he pawns his horse to try to save her, but to no avail. We hope you enjoy our performance of Cajun Folk Songs, Movement 2, Bella.
Hello, I'm Luis, a music minor here at Lipscomb University. The next work you will hear is Let Me Be Frank With You by composer John Mackey. This work is brand new and is John Mackey's first work for adaptable instrumentation, meaning the piece can be played by many different combinations of instruments, which has helped so many schools during the COVID-19 pandemic. When discussing the inspiration behind the work, Mackey said, the work is dedicated to the composer Frank Ticelli, hence the name, because this piece wouldn't exist without a strong influence. This summer, Mackie and Ticelli, along with a group of other composers, started a group called the Creative Repertoire Initiative, which has been tasked with creating music that can be performed in all types of situations during COVID. This work is part of that initiative. We hope you enjoy John Mackie's Let Me Be Frank With You.
I wanted to provide an opportunity this semester for all of the students in the Lipscomb Wind Ensemble to play together. It presented kind of a challenge during COVID um, while keeping our students' uh, safety paramount. But I thought, well, let's use the concert hall as this venue. Lipscomb has a beautiful concert hall, Collins Alumni Auditorium, which has really wonderful balconies um, that are spaced far apart. This lends itself really well to antiphonal music, so music being played from one end to the other. Using uh, Thomas Tallis's third mode melody, we were able to recreate music that might be able to have been heard this way in the 1500s, meaning antiphonally. So Tallis's third mode melody is the third of nine tunes which was composed for Archbishop Matthew Parker. And many composers and lyricists over the many years have set text to this tune. Um, it doesn't necessarily have text, but one of the most famous settings was set by composer Rafe von Williams. So we hope you enjoy our performance of Third Mode Melody by Thomas Tallis, which was set by Steve Daniel. Hello, I'm Alden Vines, a commercial music major here at Lipscomb. Finally, to celebrate the up-and-coming holidays, we present to you The Holly and the Ivy, as arranged by Ralph Carmichael. In 1961, the Stan Kenton Band recorded an album of Ralph Carmichael's arrangements of traditional Christmas tunes for Capitol Records, The Holly and the Ivy being one of them. The original arrangement included the use of a mellophonium, a unique instrument somewhere in the realms of a French horn, trumpet, and saxophone sound, extremely hard to tune. 
Today, we will feature the Lipscomb Wind Ensemble's French horn section playing the mellophonium parts. And from all of us at Lipscomb, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. 